I'm Jennifer Mullen, and this is your CBS6Albany.com morning update. Many in the area are still trying to recover from the effects of Tropical Storm Irene two years ago, and the recent devastating flash floods in Schoharie County aren't helping. We'll start this morning in Middleburg. You can see the muddy water rushing down Main Street. The road is still littered with debris there. This video was sent in by our Facebook fan, Michael. Another Facebook shot to share with you, this one from Blaze. This one shows kids stranded in Middleburg schools for hours because buses couldn't get through the flooded waters. Now, eventually, parents were able to get their kids, guiding them through the ankle-deep water. This is what everything looked like once the rain finally stopped. Residents walked through the murky water, and some even hopped into kayaks, as you can see here, to check out the damage. In some of the areas, the water reached the side of homes, and on Main Street, it reached some of the storefronts. Well, our meteorologist Chris Gloninger sent us this picture from yesterday. It was a similar scene in Schoharie, where neighborhoods were completely submerged in water. This water turned this area into a lake. The water reaches the home front's porch and way up to that street sign, as you can see there. So pretty intense floods there. Hopefully they can clean that up because I know that they're going through a rough time. Still trying to bounce back from again two years ago when Irene hit. Well, switching gears now to a deadly accident happened on Myrtle Avenue in Albany last night. Two men were carrying furniture to a second floor apartment when they fell. Both men are 26 years old. Both were taken to Albany Med where one of them later died. The other is still being treated. Police aren't releasing any other details at this time. A somber homecoming for an area Navy veteran and security contractor killed in Afghanistan. The body of Army trainer Joseph Marabito was escorted by motorcade yesterday from Saugerties to his home in Hunter. He was one of three people killed last Saturday when a man dressed in an Afghan uniform opened fire on them. Services for him will be held today and Sunday at the Aston Basajak Funeral Home in Hunter. Three men were arrested in Clifton Park after police found them in a car with prescription pills, a needle, and some marijuana. Matthew Cutler, Joseph Kelly, and Jacob Bagley were all taken into custody and now face charges. Turns out this isn't the first time Cutler and Kelly were under police radar. Both were identified as suspects in the unauthorized use of a debit card. Both men are now also charged with stolen property and larceny. Now over to Amsterdam, where this man, Jorge Canales, was arrested on burglary charges. The Amsterdam police tell us that Canales went into Emmy Lou's diner on Wednesday asking to be hired. And then yesterday, he tried to break into that same diner. Luckily, the owner was there. She called police, and police were able to find Canales hiding underneath a car in a nearby garage. Well, the mere possibility of Hoffman's Playland closing its doors sent Facebook into a frenzy. More than 13,000 people liked a Save Hoffman's Playland page. It may not be enough, though. The owner says they're considering retirement and selling the landmark and at a very valuable piece of land. We thought we'd take a proactive uh, stance and start exploring uh, opportunities that may be out there so that uh, we can retire, uh, do some of the things that we've always wanted to do. Good for them, sad for others. Hoffman's uncle sold adjacent land for $5 million several years ago. That's where the village at New Loudon is currently under construction. Well, that's your CBS6Albany.com morning update. Check back throughout the morning for updates and breaking news. Eric has the latest weather forecast. You can find that right here on the homepage. I'm Jennifer Mullen. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday.